Good afternoon, everyone. So as we discussed in the last lecture, I hope you have found the what is neighborhood. Yes, whether anyone want to tell me the definition of a neighborhood? means that you haven't done the homework. So let us go for the definition of a surface. So what we have seen about the definition of a surface is that it is simply conditions. What are the conditions on the surface to be uh, any object in E3 space to be a surface? A surface in E3 is a subset M of E3 such that for each point P of M, there exists a proper patch in M whose image contains a neighborhood of a point P in M. That is, first we should draw what is given to us. First, we have been provided with M is a subset of A3. It's said to be a... a surface if for each point p of m there exists a proper patch proper pop, proper patch means what first it should satisfy the condition first one is one one second is regularity third one is inverse function is continuous okay so there exists a map from e2 to e3 that is x is a mapping from e2 to m such that for each point p of m there exists a proper patch means what this is what image x of d you can imagine this to be a rubber sheet okay rubber sheet ko aap bending and stretching karke usko ek 3d object mein convert kar rahe right or you can imagine this to be a one uh, iron sheet and you apply some operation that is stretching bending all the operation you have to apply and you have to convert it into a 3d object for each point p of m there exists a proper patch whose image that is image of x of d contains the neighborhood of a point p in m okay now as we are in a 3d space so let us define the neighborhood for a point p n is a notation for a neighborhood p is a for that particular point p so how we are going to define n of p or uh, np is equals to set of all points in m such that distance between p and q is less than epsilon set of all points in your surface m or object m because still we haven't found whether it is surface or not uh, so distance between any points p uh, any point q and the point p it should be less than epsilon that means it has some sphere right p is a center and q is a common distance and this it is strictly less than epsilon so it, we can create a one neighborhood for that point p okay so for what are the condition first it should be uh, any subset m of a3 second condition it should satisfy the condition of a proper patch for each point p in m for each point p you should have a one proper patch and that proper patch should contain the neighborhood of a, that point P in M. Proper patch whose image means what? X of D. Okay. D is a <coughs> domain. And uh, resultant we are getting X of D. So X of D should contain the neighborhood of a point P in M. So in this way we can define the definition for the surface that... Uh, subset m of e3 such that for each point p in m there exists a proper patch in m whose image contains the neighborhood of a point p in m now how to define the neighborhood for every point p the distance between the any point q from the point in a surface the distance between the two points should be less than epsilon that means you should have a one neighborhood for a point p okay so this is what the definition of a surface Okay, and this should be true for every point P of a surface M and that 
for every point p we should have a one proper patch okay now let us go for the example the first example which we will see is a compute the proper patch in a unit sphere covering the neighborhood of a north pole compute a proper patch in a unit sphere unit sphere is denoted by this summation covering the neighborhood of a north pole okay north pole means what i suppose i have a point at the north pole as we have a sphere with the unit sphere no we have a unit sphere that's we north pole with p at 0 0 and 1 okay we have to find out the proper patch for the north pole now for that one first we'll let us uh, see what is our sphere okay now what will be our sphere it is with center at 0 and radius is 1 so let us assume that we have one sphere let us assume that this is what a sphere with the center at origin and radius is 1 and there will be your north pole so here at the top you can see we have a north pole and with the 0 0 1 this is what your x axis this is z axis and this is what your y axis Correct. Now we have to find out uh, for this point only for this point zero zero one on the sphere. Zero zero one is a one point on the sphere. You have to find out proper patch for this. Okay. Now how to find out the proper patch for the north pole? First, we should find out what is that point. Okay. पॉइंट यहाँ पे आपका Z कोऑर्डिनेट पे होगा हियर इट इज विथ जीरो जीरो वन नाउ एज यू सी द डेफिनेशन फॉर एवरी पॉइंट P इन योर M देर एग्जिस्ट अ प्रॉपर पैच फॉर एवरी पॉइंट P इन M देर शुड एग्जिस्ट अ वन प्रॉपर पैच फॉर द प्रॉपर पैच व्हाट वी विल डू इफ यू वांट टू डिफाइन अ प्रॉपर पैच फर्स्ट वी शुड हैव अ वन डोमेन डोमेन में आपको एक एनी सबसेट डी ऑफ ई टू चाहिए करेक्ट नो hello yes ma'am so we should have one subset d of a e2 subset of e2 space and then we can define the proper patch correct so for that uh, to have a easier way to define the our uh, d what we will consider let us assume that uh, we have uh, one circle here okay what we will do instead of taking any other a uh, subset of e2 what we will take one circle right but what is the condition on that circle it is in xy plane correct right? we will take one circle in the xy plane now you can imagine okay just imagine that we have a sphere <coughs> and we have circle in xy plane the image of this circle i have to take okay this is just like i'm defining a mapping okay d and here from here to here we have a mapping such that x of d will be here okay you can imagine this to be x of d which will cover 
this point zero zero one. Here is your point zero zero one, and this is what your x of d. Correct. So here, uh, starting with d, d is what it is any circle in x y plane with the center at origin. <laughs> so image of this uh, will be x of d. Which contains this point. So here we can say that now we have a proper patch. Correct? No. Now you may have a question: How you found the proper patch, right? So here in this definition itself, you can see the for any for D uh, the image X of D and its image X of D must contain the neighborhood of a point P in M. So you can define a one very small neighborhood at this point. So यहाँ पे आपको एक neighborhood मिलेगा and then uh, x of d will contain the neighborhood of that point P. Now one may have a question that here we have a subset D and image we are getting in a 3D space. So whether we are getting x of d in a 3D space, definitely it is a one point in a 3D space. Uh, sorry, x of d will be in a 3D space because here we have we are in a x y z that is in E3 space, but here we are in only x y plane. Initially, we were in x-y plane, and we define a mapping from uh, one circle to a point, or we can say uh, north pole. Okay, we have defined a mapping from a circle in x-y plane to a north pole, and that's why you can consider here this to be a one x of d is a one uh, image which is in a E3 space. Correct. So here, this is in E3 space. Since here we it can see here the z coordinate is there. So x, y, z, all the coordinates are there. So you can consider this to be a one image uh, in a E3 space. Correct. Now you can define this mapping in such a way that this is a circle in x, y plane. So first we should uh, find out what how the mapping should be defined. Okay. मतलब हमें x define करना है, right? x from d to e3 first we should define then we'll go for the next point that means whether proper patch exists or not that we will see later on okay first हमने mapping geometrically देखा है कि हाँ it will exist but now we have to see it theoretically whether this will be a proper patch that means you have to check the condition of one one regularity and inverse function is continuous okay so for that for each point in the northern hemisphere there exists a projection that means aap jo bhi point northern hemisphere pe loge uska ek point aapko xy plane mein obviously milega kyunki change kya hai wahan pe hum just like a cylinder we are considering you can see the image we are having a uh, one circle in xy plane so whatever the points they will carry as it is but what is the change only the change in the z coordinate so suppose uh, we have q1 q2 in xy plane so image will be there only with the coordinate q1 q2 and q3 so what is the change only changes is is there in a z coordinate so in the northern hemisphere that means first we will consider only hemisphere okay because we are concerning only about the northern hemisphere so we want to find out the proper patch for the point 0 0 so that's why we will consider one Uh, circle in xy plane so what are the points in xy plane with the coordinate say q1 q2 now image of this that is in x of d x of d madhe kay milna tumhara q1 q2 and q3 so what is the change only changes in the z coordinate are you getting me yes ma'am so you can imagine this to be uh, just like a projection so X is a mapping from D to E3. Instead of saying D to E3, I can say it is from one circle to E3 space. And now uh, we can see the image in the such a way that F. Uh, sorry, instead of defining X first, first we'll define. Sorry, here it should be a function F. In such a way that it is from northern hemisphere to your D. Northern hemisphere to D, we are finding a mapping such that for every point in your northern hemisphere with Q1, Q2, and Q3, you are getting it as Q1, Q2, zero. That is, this is a point in your circle, and uh, whatever the image you are getting will be a Q1, Q2, and Q3. Okay. 
so here you can consider the q1 q2 q3 is a point in northern hemisphere and its a projection projection means sawli in the xy plane will be simply q1 q2 no th third coordinate that is third coordinate is zero okay so in this way we have defined our function now we can see this function is 1 1 on 2 because for every point uh, in your xy plane obviously there will be image in your uh, northern hemisphere and vice versa okay reverse humne define kiya first we have defined from northern hemisphere and then we can see that it is a one one on to function because for every point you can see the image as well as for the pre image correct now the northern hemisphere and d we are having the d is nothing but a disk in xy plane with radius is 1 and center at origin so uh, we can have a natural embedding or natural association with the meaning of q1 q2 and third coordinate is 0 to q1 q2 okay simply instead of writing q1 q2 and 0 i can write them as q1 q2 like this only okay because simply we have a third coordinate is 0 so we can have a natural association like q1 q2 0 can be written as a simply q1 q2 okay then uh, that whatever d becomes a disk in xy plane and consisting of all the points in such a way that here now we define a d okay already humne geometric interpretation mein dekha hai ki actually kaise work hota hai right d is a one <coughs> circle in xy plane then we define a mapping like this now here we are doing this in a theoretical way so for that first we define a mapping and then f of q1 q2 q3 is q1 q2 and 0 now this q1 q2 or 0 iski jagah pe aap simply q1 q2 likh sakte ho right now uh, you can consider that d to be the elements or the points which have the consideration with u v belongs to e2 such that u square plus v square is less than 1 all the points from e2 space such that u square plus v square is strictly less than 1 that is it is one circle in a xy plane u and instead of x and y we have considered u and v okay because if you remember uh, in the definition itself we have written x of uv okay so now we will define the inverse function okay actually hame inverse nahi bolna chahiye kyunki hum log mapping define kar rahe right uh, you will come to know this later on when you solve more examples so the mapping x now can be defined from d to e3 such that x of uv right x of uv is equals to what will be x of uv image of those points in xy plane aapke xy plane mein u and v honge image mein kya points aayenge u v and the z coordinate also right so u v what about z coordinate how you are going to write the z coordinate right for that one what we will do we will take a help of our sphere okay what is our sphere x square plus y square plus z square is equal to 1 given that it is a unit sphere and x and y we are knowing so how you can write z square it is 1 minus x square plus y square in uh, bracket now you can write this as a z square is equal to under root of sorry z is equal to 1 minus u square minus v square x and y we have treated as a u and v so i can write the z coordinate as 1 minus u square minus v square under root of 1 minus u square minus v square so in this way first we have defined a mapping from a circle to our e3 space is the idea clear about the mapping Yes, so when we have a question that uh, your d uh, is what u square plus v square is strictly less than one. Now what will happen if I have a u square plus v square is equal to one? Equal to one as well. Then kai kai made it tomorrow. Zero. Two D made it. Two D. U square plus v square equal to. Image two D made it better, man. Ha, correct. 
सो हेयर यू कैन गेट यू स्क्वायर प्लस वी स्क्वायर अगर वन होगा तो यहाँ पे थर्ड कंडीशन क्या आएगा अंडर रूट ऑफ वन माइनस यू स्क्वायर प्लस वी स्क्वायर यू माइनस साइन अगर कॉमन लेंगे तो वन माइनस वन इट इज जीरो सो दैट्स वाई वी हैव कंसिडर दिस टू बी यू स्क्वायर प्लस वी स्क्वायर आर स्ट्रिक्टली लेस देन वन ओके सो हेयर इक्वालिटी कंडीशन इज नॉट देयर सो मोस्टली वी आर हैविंग द हैबिट टू राइट डाउन लेस देन इक्वालिटी so you should not write down equality here strictly less means what strictly less because if we are having equality it means that we are again coming back to the our 2d plane okay so in this way we have defined the mapping firstly we have defined the inverse mapping that is from uh, north pole to our xy plane then with the help of that mapping f of q1 q2 q3 is equals to q1 q2 we have found that we get a, a uh, circle in xy plane and then we define the mapping x from d to e3 such that what is your d d is with the, all the points in a circle in xy plane then x of uv is equals to uv under root of 1 minus u square minus v square okay so in this way the mapping is defined now uh, half part of this is completed now what is our aim to do now we have to check the whether it is a proper patch or not okay so how to check whether it is a proper patch or not we have to to start with the first condition we have to check whether x is 1 1 okay to check x is 1 1 you have to take x of u1 v1 is equals to x of u2 v2 images are equal then points are equal or you can go with x1 not equal to x2 then f of x1 not equal to f of x2 this one is easier contrapositive statement okay now let me write down this is what u1 and u2 sorry u1 and v1 and the third coordinate is 1 minus u1 square minus v1 square which is equal to again we have uh, u2 and v2 under root of 1 minus u2 square minus v2 square okay now by taking a coordinate wise equality you can get u1 is equals to u2 and v1 is equal to v2 and hence i can say that u1 v1 is equals to u2 v2 so hence we proved the one one condition okay secondly we have to prove x is regular to prove regularity first we have to give the names for them x of u v is equals to u v Under root of one minus u square minus v square, so this is what x one, and this is x two and x three. Right? Now let us find out the matrix derivative of x one. We have to find out with respect to u, x two with respect to u, x three with respect to u. Similarly, derivative of x one with respect to v. X two with respect to v, x three with respect to v, which is equal to now x one, x two, x three. You have clear. Hai. Derivative of u with respect to u one, derivative of uh, v with respect to u is zero. Derivative of x three with respect to u. What will be the derivative? Yes. What is the derivative of x three with respect to u? Two u upon under root one minus u square minus v square minus two u. Minus two u. Uh, so I can cancel this two u also. So I can write directly as a minus u divided by under root of one minus u square minus v square. Two two get cancelled. Similarly, now find the derivative. <coughs> This one is zero, one. Again, here you get minus v upon under root of one minus u square minus v square. Now you can take any matrix of two cross two. So you can have the determinant is non-zero. Why it is non-zero? U and v are not equal to zero. Okay, u and v are not equal to zero. 
No man. Hmm. Rank is two. At least we can get one matrix of order two cross two, na? If we check this, then this one will be zero. U upon under root of one minus u square minus v square. Is there any condition not given, na? U and v are equal to zero. यहाँ पे क्या कंडीशन है यू एंड वी आर एनी पॉइंट्स फ्रॉम ई टू एंड द कंडीशन यू स्क्वायर प्लस वी स्क्वायर इज स्ट्रिक्टली लेस देन वन सो देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट यू एंड वी कैन बी जीरो बट वी गेट एटलीस्ट वन मैट्रिक्स ऑफ ऑर्डर टू क्रॉस टू विच इज नॉट जीरो अगर आप ये वाला कंसिडर करें सो हेंस वी गेट वन मैट्रिक्स ऑफ ऑर्डर टू क्रॉस टू विच इज हैविंग अ डिटर्मिनेट वैल्यू इज नॉन जीरो एंड हेंस वी कैन से दैट द रैंक ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स इज इक्वल टू Two, which implies that it is a regular. So your mapping X is a regular mapping. Now, what is our next job? We have to find out whether mapping X inverse is a continuous. To find out whether X inverse is continuous, first we should define a mapping X inverse. Okay. Now, how to define a mapping X inverse? Now, the inverse mapping defined. करता ना अपन काय करना रहे. It is from X of D to D only. Correct. Instead of taking a whole E three space. We can take only x of d, right? Uh, now inverse mapping is from x inverse x of d to d. Now we have already verified that it is a one one. No need to check on to because we are in E three space. So inverse mapping exists. Now we have to find out the inverse function how it x. So x inverse of x of d means three coordinates will be there as it is in a uh, subset of a E three space will be equal to x and y. Correct. Now you must find out what are x, y, z, right? First, we should uh, write down this as x of u v. Kya mila hai apko yahan pe with uh, u v under root of one minus u square minus v square. So this is what your x, y, and z, right? Uh, so you can now write down z is nothing but under root of one minus x square minus y square. इस मैपिंग के लिए ज्यादा डिफिकल्ट नहीं है अर्लियर वॉट एवर वी एग्जाम्पल वी हैव सॉल्व एट द टाइम एक्स इज अंडर रूट ऑफ यू वाई इज अंडर रूट ऑफ वी सो हियर नो नीड टू गो वॉट दैट ना एक्स डायरेक्टली आपको यू मिलेगा वाई इज बी एंड डायरेक्टली यू कैन डिफाइन द इनवर्स मैपिंग इज द आइडिया क्लियर अबाउट द इनवर्स मैपिंग इजी है ना इनवर्स डिफाइन करना इजी है इस एग्जाम्पल में सो uh, हेल्स so First, we have defined the inverse mapping. Now you have to check whether inverse is continuous. To check inverse mapping is continuous, we have to check its coordinate function. That is x and y. Whether x and y are continuous? Yes, ma'am. So hence, x and y are the continuous functions. It implies that you are mapping x inverse is continuous. So from one, two, and three, I can say that x is a proper patch. For only one point we have found that is zero zero one on the northern hemisphere. Correct. Now you can do it very similarly for other points, right? Now here with the help of three uh, part whatever we have proved one one regularity inverse function is continuous. So x is a proper patch. So x of zero zero. Kya me kya milega apko x of zero zero? You have a mapping now. U is zero, V is also zero. Under root of one minus one. zero zero is one. Correct. So image of that origin will be zero zero one. That is your one point in the northern hemisphere. So in this way, you can see that for a mapping X, we can find out zero zero one is uh, obtained by with the help of X of zero zero. And hence, we can say that your X hole covers your neighborhood of a Point zero zero one. Forever, X will cover the neighborhood of a point zero zero one. That is one point in a uh, we can say from northern hemisphere. Okay. In fact, we can say that X of D contains a neighborhood of a, each of point of a hemisphere. Okay. आपके अगर हर एक point के लिए आप निकालोगे तो hemisphere के through भी वो construct हो सकता है, right? So hence we can say that your X of D is a surface and similarly we can go for the southern hemisphere south mein agar aap jaoge to we can take one again uh, one point and then we can define a mapping x of d right wahan pe kya change ho jayega agar point uh, so 
साउथ में कौन सा पॉइंट आएगा इनिशियल वी एफ सीन फॉर नॉर्थ जीरो जीरो वन हाँ वट डू यू थिंक वट विल बी द पॉइंट इन साउदर्न एमोस्फियर जीरो जीरो माइनस वन जीरो जीरो माइनस वन सो फॉर करोस्पॉन्डिंग मैपिंग एक्स एंड यू कैन प्रूव दैट एक्स ऑफ दैट जीरो जीरो विल बी जीरो जीरो माइनस वन ओके सो इन दैरी सिमिलर वे यू कैन प्रूव फॉर एवरी पॉइंट ऑफ यूर सर्कल यू कैन फाइंड आउट वन प्रॉपर पैच एंड That's why the definition is difficult. For every point, we have to find out a proper patch. यहाँ पे हमने सिर्फ जीरो जीरो वन के लिए find out किया है, right? But uh, actually हमने जीरो जीरो वन के लिए find out किया है, but this x of d जो हमने find out किया है, contains a neighborhood of each of points of hemisphere. आपके जो hemisphere के points हैं, उसका neighborhood आप उसके points में x of d में आ जाएगा, correct? जो मैंने यहाँ पे draw किया था, वो simply for one point zero zero one. Okay, this is on, for only one point zero zero one, and this can consider every point from the northern hemisphere, and hence we can say that your function, whatever we have defined, x of u v is equal to u v, and how you define the third coordinate, it is only with the z coordinate, or z coordinate, आपको कहाँ से मिला? आपके given equation से, right? And u and v you can find out easily because All of the points in x-y plane will be as it is carried out to the image, but what is the change? Only changes in the z-coordinate. X-y plane से आप अगर height में increase कर रहे हो, it means that you are going in a uh, z-axis, so you should have only z-coordinate. Okay, so in this way we can find out for every point, uh, for every point of the surface uh, sphere, we have to find out a proper patch, and hence finally we can say that uh, this sphere is not nothing but a surface. Okay. So we have only half part proved. Later on you can say that similarly we can do uh, do it for a southern hemisphere, and then completely we can say that. Whatever the equation of a circle, uh, equation of a sphere is given, is a <coughs> surface. Okay. Yes. Any student having any type of a doubt, you can ask. Uh, if you're not having a doubt, let us end here because I think uh, this much is sufficient for one example of a surface is sufficient for this lecture. अगर ज़्यादा लूँगी तो सभी याद नहीं होगा. Okay, if you're having any doubt for this one, you can ask. Otherwise, we'll end the lecture.